How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about something pretty fun. This is The Creeps issue number 28 from February 2021. Take a look at this cover. You get a uh, wizard who is quite spooked to find that he's summoned this genie. Kind of a fun, uh, kind of silly cartoony looking cover there with the exaggerated features and whatnot. Pretty fun. Uh, and this does actually happen in the book, so we will, uh, in a little bit, uh, get to that. Uh, before we do, uh, for those of you guys who don't know, the Creeps magazine is um, a black and white anthology horror magazine, which you know features a bunch of really cool, creepy stories. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of them covering, say, like the classic monsters, and a lot of really cool uh, classic horror. There, that is not always classic, but uh, a variety magazine with uh, some attention to the the classic stuff. Um, I found this at uh, Barnes and Noble, so if you guys are looking for it, uh, you might try there. Um, but yeah, a fun anthology horror magazine in the vein of, say, Tales from the Crypt. Really, really cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open it up and take a look at these stories inside. Uh, no major spoilers, though, so uh, don't worry about that. But I want to, you know, uh, talk about the stories and their plots and let you guys have a basic understanding of what they are. But, like I said, uh, without any major spoilers, uh, open it up to the uh, front cover. On the inside of the cover, they always do the old Creeps historic horrors. He's covering Bloody Bones this time, and it's a uh, story that has a few different interpretations. Uh, you see him sometimes as a cautionary tale to stay out of the swamp. Here, there he is uh, underneath the stairs with a collection of bones. He's stealing a gossiper's head there. And in this last one, he's in the closet ready to take this kid away to Never Never Land. But yeah, a uh, creepy skeleton covered in blood it is uh, pretty fun. And I hadn't have heard of him before, so it's always cool when they tell me about a, a new monster. And it's a, a pretty fun one. And you know, you look at old stories and they have different interpretations, so that was kind of fun. Um, after that, uh, after the historic horse, here's the uh, table of contents. If you guys want to see who brought you this magazine, uh, you can pause and take a look at the credits there. A little bit too many to uh, to read them all out loud, but uh, there's uh, top is credits, and then under that is the table of contents. We have the historic horrors, the dear old creeps leather letter page, and the fan club page. And in addition to that, we get six stories, and you can see little previews for all six stories in these little uh, boxes here. So let's go ahead and dive into the first one again. Uh, no major spoilers. Oh, yeah. well, before we get there, there's the old creep mail page where he's on the stamp there. A little box talking about artist Jeff Easley, and there's a drawing of this knight who's lost his arms and legs. Um, it's actually a little more than a page. It goes on to a second one. But anyway, moving on to the, uh, the first one, Kiss of Blood, which is a tale reminiscent of those uh, European vampire movies with a title that I'm surprised hasn't been used for a European vampire movie. Uh, maybe it has been. Um, but you get this carriage going to a house and the ladies are watching it approach. And when he gets in, you think uh, this guy is just there for the woman, they're uh, prostitutes. But it's revealed that he knows that these are actually vampires and he came... Uh, ready for them, but he's not there to kill them. He's there to uh, send them after one of his rivals for power, uh, Prince Arturo. And if they kill him, he'll keep this place under his protection and keep the vampire hunters away from them. So, you know, striking a deal, which, uh, granted, this is a horror story, it's probably not going to go down in the best possible way. Um, and especially, you know, you got some vampires there. I really do like this picture of her, you know, lifting down her veil. And if you look close, you can see the vampire fangs. Uh, this is a, a one of the shorter stories, um, not too terribly long. And that does, you know, 
kind of eat into you know what it you know could have been but despite it being short is really fun and I do like that it's referencing the uh, European vampire movies a little bit of an obscure thing but they are doing a story in that tone and that was really fun to see you know a more obscure genre represented in this comic um, but if you don't know the European vampire movies there's some pretty fun stuff there uh, most famously the Hammer vampire movies but there is a bunch of more obscure European vampire movies out there that are all pretty fun sometimes a little cheesy but all all pretty fun um, this next one the Isle of Pines uh, this is the uh, the classic horror um, the creeps are really good about taking all these classic short horse horror stories and usually one per issue you get an adaptation of one of them into a comic form uh, this was originally made by Ambrose Bryce in 1913 so over a hundred years ago that's pretty cool uh, but there's this guy and rumor has it that he used to be a pirate he dies and people go searching for the gold they assume he has uh, treasure because they think he was a pirate but they look all through his old house in Ohio actually um, they look all through his old house and they can't find any of the gold now later this priest who's been away for a while doesn't know of the guy's death and he seeks shelter from a storm inside his house and the guy his ghost is wandering around the house and looking for something and not acknowledging the priest's presence so you get this creepy old guy going around his house not even noticing you and just looking for something it's a pretty creepy visual and i'm actually reviewing this pretty late at night but uh, a really fun idea there and it's man it's a pretty creepy idea there's this old guy wandering around looking for something and he doesn't see you uh, i don't know what it is about that visual but that's that's pretty fun and it is great to see the creeps magazine giving classic horror some uh some modern uh, attention there uh, up next we have the wizard of vlunder and in the wizard of vlunder you get this uh king's wizard who has passed away after a very intense ritual now he was trying to give the king lots of power so the king still wants the uh the ritual done he still wants to get his way there but how is he going to do that well the wizard does have a living relative which he thinks hey you're a relative of this guy you can figure it out so this poor guy is just has to jump in and study a whole bunch of magic really quick or the king's going to kill him because he's an unfair king and he manages to summon this genie and he's like okay i got a genie that can basically do whatever the king wants so he's going to give the king the genie but of course you know genies and monkeys paw style wishes it's uh a pretty fun story and I do like this uh, different art style kinda like how you saw it on the front where everything's a little more blockier and it makes it uh, fun for this fantasy story and I do like a fantasy story so it is a little bit different I like every now and then throwing in something different giving the magazine variety that way so a fun fantasy horror movie that's pretty cool um, and then jumping on to something else different uh, stakes on a train so title's a clear reference to the Samuel L. Jackson movie, but uh, this story is not a parody of it. But it talks about it's way back in time. You get uh, the crook, uh, Jesse James, I believe. Yeah, he's the one in this. And they're planning to rob a train. But what they don't know is that on this train, a professor is transporting the corpse of a vampire he's staked. So... One of the men finds that and, unfortunately for them, pulls the stake out and the vampire starts to wreak havoc on this train. So you get to see a cool Jesse James versus a vampire and on top of all that it's on a train. Really fun. Love, love this story. 
Uh, so yeah, you can talk about shaking things up. You know, you get a, a vampire, a classic monster, but a western, which you don't see all the time in horror uh, movies. And on top of all that, it's on a train, and I gotta love trains. Uh, but anyway, moving right along, this next story called Cut is about a director and he his career is kind of going downhill. People aren't showing up to his movies as often. You get to see the uh, legally distinct version of uh, Jason that's appearing in this movie. And as a joke, they made the actor's name Jason, which was <laughs> really funny. But uh, I do like this alternate version of the mask that they came up with uh, for their version of Jason. But anyway, he's working on one of his movies and he's cooling down in the prop room. And he's upset about his career going downhill, and he doesn't like his actors. And he thinks, hey, what if I gave the killer in my movie a real chainsaw and say that it was a mistake, and the accident will uh, drum up a bunch of publicity for my new film. So he's going to stage this accident in order to uh, get publicity for his film and hopefully get his career back on track. So, fun, evil movie director uh, story. And gotta love, you know, references to to 80s horror there. There's a ton of Easter eggs, especially you look in the prop room. Whole bunch of stuff, you know, limit configuration, teleporter, and even just Frankenstein and Freddy's glove there. All, all pretty cool stuff. If, if you like 80s horror, there's a ton in this story to check out. A um, ton of Easter eggs and, you know, a lot of stuff that's just just different enough. Um, but a really fun story. And, you know, movie making is always a cool subject to, uh, to touch on there. So um, I really do like that story. You know, movies about movie making are pretty cool and a fun subgenre. It doesn't get a lot of uh, attention. Uh, but anyway, this is the uh, the uh, old Creeps uh, fan club here. We get uh, drawings from people, uh, Lon Chaney Sr., and a drawing of the old creep there, and a short story uh, called The Machine about some scientist who accidentally let loose a killing machine into uh, the woods by their base and things going horribly wrong from there. So, a fun short story that's actually pretty short, but uh, gets, a, gets a lot in that short time. Moving right along, we have the very last story in this magazine, uh, this issue, which is One for the Road, and I do like the, the old creeps driving a car there. That I, I love it when he's doing something fun. Uh, but anyway, a group of people uh, 50s kids going to a dance and they hear on the radio rumors of a car with a phantom driver. This really does feel like, you know, an old timey, you know, hook on the <laughs> hook on the handle type of ghost story, you know. It's not that story, but it's very reminiscent, you know, and the idea that these kids are going to come in contact with the phantom car they've heard on the radio. Again, another uh, shorter one, but it does a lot in the time it's given, and you know, you gotta love old-timey ghost stories with with phantom cars. That's pretty fun. I want to show you at least one panel of it without, you know, spoiling anything, and it does have a, a pretty fun uh, twist at the end there, so um, I really did like this. Uh, the vein of the old ghost stories, the old uh, ones that you'd tell your friends, you know, and you'd have to remember the story and get it right and have, you know, the, the grim ending and the twist. Um, and the twist isn't exactly the campfire story twist that you might expect, but it is uh, something, something fun there. So a good ghost stories type tale, and I really did like it, and it's a great way to round up the magazine. But anyway... The Creeps 28, and oh, I guess before I leave, uh, there's one thing at the very back of this magazine. An ad for uh, Vampiris Carmella, uh, a new magazine that also, like this one, uh, features black and white horror stories. So if you like this and you want some more, I'd recommend uh, checking it out. I actually 
did a review for it on this channel already. Here it is right there. So yeah, number one of another magazine uh, from Warrant telling uh, anthology whores out. And at the end of this video, a playlist will pop up. And that'll be my comics playlist, I believe. And if you want to click on that, scroll through the videos, uh, Vampirus Carmilla should be in there in that playlist as well as a few other reviews for the creeps so if you want to check it out that should be in there anyway uh, to everyone who's watched so far thank you for watching to everyone who's liked and subscribed thank you, you really are helping this channel out I do other than this um, about 95 percent horror movies on this channel so if that sounds like something you're interested in and I'd recommend uh, sticking around and uh, checking some of those out uh, but other than that, I do a comic a week, and I will have the comics playlist down at the bottom where you can find more of the creeps and also uh, Vampiris uh, Carmella there. So um, that should be fun. So if you want to check that out, that's uh, in the comics playlist there. Anyway, have a good day, and I'll see you guys again very, very soon.